my name is Katie Carson and welcome to our instructional and educational video series here on YouTube, the Royal Creative Academy. Today we will be discussing all things lye, including where to source it, how to prepare it for soap making, proper safety precautions to follow, and a whole lot of information and helpful tips that I have picked up along the way in my almost nine years of soap making. So first of all, what is lye and can you make soap without it. To quote Wikipedia, a lye is a metal hydroxide traditionally obtained by leaching ashes or a strong alkali which is highly soluble in water producing caustic basic solutions. There are two hydroxides used to make soap. Sodium hydroxide, which is used to make bar soap, like what we do here at Royalty Soaps, and potassium hydroxide, which makes liquid soap. But lye isn't just for soap making. No, in fact, it's used to manufacture a lot of things, including paper products, pharmaceuticals, food, and even in municipal water treatment. It's a very versatile chemical, and it does a lot of good for us. And no, you can't make soap without it. Without lye, you would have a bucket of oil sitting on your counter forever. But what about the soap making kits at my store? What about the soap bases I find at my store? There's soap kits at the craft store that don't use lye. But technically, you're just purchasing soap made by a manufacturer with, you guessed it, lye and oils. It's already fully saponified when boxed up and shipped out to distributors. You are simply remelting it adding fragrance and color, and remolding it into a really pretty design. This is not to not glycerin soap crafting at all. It's simply an explanation of how even that soap was still made with lye. So once the chemical reaction of making soap called saponification is complete, the oil molecules and the lye water solution molecules have come together and created an entirely new chemical compound. So Meaning, if made properly, there is absolutely no lie in your finished product. The number one thing that scares people out of making soap is the idea of working with a caustic substance. I personally like to compare soap making with driving a car. Yes, it can be super scary, especially your first couple of times. But if you follow the rules of the road, use common sense, and study up before your first drive, it will get easier and you will get more comfortable as you continue to practice. So where do we buy lye and what can we mix it in if it's so corrosive? My favorite and most trusted lye suppliers are down in the description box and you might have to do a little bit of your own research to see which one of them is going to offer you guys the best deal because of shipping. For me personally, Duda Diesel is the least expensive option while Amazon provides the fastest shipping and turnaround time. Time. Not all lie suppliers are created equal. Okay, I'm just gonna repeat that. Not all lie suppliers are created equal. And the ones that I recommend have given me fantastic results multiple times, and that's the T. As far as containers to mix in, I like to recommend three different options. Stainless steel, polypropylene, and high density polyethylene. Stainless steel is amazing to work with. It's super easy to clean, but it's pricey. So if you're first starting out, I recommend that you go to the dollar store, pick up some plastic containers with screw top lids, like the ones I have to help lessen the financial burden of soap making. To identify if a container is the right sort of plastic, flip it upside down and look for one of these two recycling codes. Recycling code 5 is for polypropylene and recycling code 2 is for HDPE or high density polyethylene. If you've chosen to recycle some old food containers that maybe you had for food storage or food prep in the past, that's totally awesome. Don't use food containers and soap containers interchangeably. Also, anything storing your lye water solution should have 
have a screw top lid. That way, if you accidentally drop your container, nothing spills, leaks, or shatters. I do not recommend using glass for mixing your lye water solution because it can eventually etch over time and can break. Also, using breakable things in an area that already requires so much safety is just generally not a good idea. For your mixing spoons, I also recommend either stainless steel or plastic. Don't use wooden spoons. The lye water solution will eat it. For your liquid solution, you can get pretty fancy. You can use milks, teas, vegetable juices, fruit juices, even beers and wines. But for this tutorial, and generally what I recommend for all beginners to start out with is just plain old water, either distilled from the grocery store or from the tap. So now that you've acquired your lye, your mixing bowls and containers, your mixing utensils and your water, it's time to talk about safety. When manufacturing anything, safety should be number one on your priority list. It is far better for you to be too safe than not safe enough. And the following procedure is what we at Royalty Soaps have made a standard in our studio. The number one item on your checklist absolutely has to be putting on protective eyewear. Everybody near an open lye solution container must wear protective eyewear. I even have the soap Soap makers at Royalty Soaps put face shields on over their goggles for a double layer of protection when mixing up their soap. If you lose your eyesight to lie, it's never coming back. So protect your eyes at all costs. If the absolute worst scenario has happened and you do need first aid, follow the instructions on the lie safety data sheet provided by all reputable lie suppliers. For your convenience, I have linked it down down below in the description box. Number two is to put on protective gloves. Now we use disposable vinyl or nitrile gloves, but some people really prefer using the big kitchen gloves that are made out of rubber. That's really your decision, but be sure to wear it through your entire soap making process from prep to cleanup. You should also be wearing closed toed shoes, long sleeve shirts, and pants. That way your skin and feet are covered. Accidents do happen, so it's good to be prepared for the worst. Now in some of my previous videos, you can probably see that I don't actually have long sleeves and I'm kicking myself now for doing that because that's not the safest way to soap. The safest way to soap is to have almost everything you can have covered, covered. So going forward, I will be wearing long sleeves in all of my videos to not only protect myself, but set a good example for you guys. Now pro tip, if you live in a very humid or hot climate or are just generally warm bodied, I like to wear athletic shirts because they're breathing breathable so you don't get hot. And they don't collect sweat, which is a bonus. <laughs> now, optionally, you can prepare your lye using a respirator mask. And this is particularly helpful for people who prepare their lye solution without using a frozen liquid like ice or frozen milk cubes. Pouring straight lye into tepid water is going to create an irritating chemical steam that will rise up from your container. It can make you cough. It's very, very annoying. And this is why at Royalty Soaps, we make all of our lye solutions using at least 50% ice. That eliminates the steam that comes up and keeps the lye water solution relatively cool while you're working. So you're not getting like 200 degree liquid solutions in your house. I would highly recommend everybody use ice when preparing their lye water solution. When prepping your solution, you should also be in a well-ventilated area. It doesn't have to be a huge room, just a space that gets decent airflow and isn't closed off. That might mean turning on a big fan and cracking a window for those of y'all in a studio apartment. You need to make sure that your prepping station is secure from all pets, small children, or other people not in proper safety gear. And that your dry bottled lye and liquid lye solutions are also kept in a secure location, ideally with a lock on them. Now that you and your area have been safely prepped, this is your moment. You are capable, you are safe, and you're going to do great. So let's make your lye solution. The amount of water that you need will depend on your recipe. For today's demonstration, I am using my personal recipe that has been tailored to fit this purple mold from Amazon. You can find both the full recipe and the link to the mold down below in the description 
description box. The recipe calls for 8.52 ounces of water and 4.59 ounces of lye. I'm going to be rounding down the water amount to an even 8.5 and rounding up the lye to 4.6 as my scale doesn't measure down to a one hundredth of an ounce and only works in 10% increments. As I mentioned earlier, the best way to prepare your lye water is with a 50% water and 50% ice mixture. It keeps your liquid from reaching insane temperatures and also minimizes the chances that a thick steam will rise. If you use up to 75% ice, however, you probably won't get any steam at all. So for my batch, this means 4.25 ounces of water and 4.25 ounces of ice in my container. Now it's time to measure the lye. I know some folks like to do this next step in their stainless steel sinks like I have to make cleanup easier, but a clean countertop or table would also work. Just make sure there's nothing else on it or around it. I recommend you measure into a separate container from your water just in case you pour a little too much. With your lye measured out and ready to go, begin pouring it very slowly into your ice water. Never pour water into lye as this could result in a lye volcano that bubbles out of your container. Always pour your lye into your water. As you're pouring, gently stir with your plastic or stainless steel spoon. Continue stirring until all your lye has dissolved. And you may notice that little flecks appear on top of the water. This is called lye lint and happens sometimes when the lye water reacts with the air. Don't fret, it's completely harmless and can be either strained out or in the future simply blended back in. After everything is properly blended, cover your container with the lid, slap a piece of tape on it, and write down the day it was compounded and the batch size. I don't recommend using lye water that has sat for more than 14 days as it does weaken and evaporate over time. Congratulations, you just prepped your lye water solution. Now it's time to clean up your area and be sure you keep on all of your safety gear for this step. Rinse all of your dishes with very cold water and either dry them out with a paper towel or place them off to the side to air dry. Take a vinegar soaked paper towel or washcloth and wipe down anything that may have come into contact with your lye or lye water solution. That means your countertops, your scales, your utensils, anything. Vinegar will neutralize any lye that may still be present, but it should not be used to treat chemical burns. Once again, please consult the MSDS sheet. And that's it. Everything you need to know about lye and prepping it for soap making. If you're interested in learning more about soap making or alternatively just like seeing it made, please subscribe to our channel. You can leave us a big thumbs up and you can leave any questions you have down below in the comment section. We will be making more beginner soap making tutorials in the future, so if you want to be notified whenever those pop up, click that notification bell. And until next time, have an absolutely royal day and bye for now!